You are listening to the Star Coach Podcast with Meg Rentschler, Episode 11. Welcome to Star Coaches, the show for professional coaches that brings you coaching strategies, tools, and resources. Whatever your focus or niche, take a front seat weekly as industry leaders, decision makers, and innovators share their wisdom and expertise on the ins and outs of successful coaching. Now join your host, Meg Rentschler, as she connects you with your star coaching potential. Hello and welcome to this week's show. I'm your host, Meg Rentschler. It is always great to have you join us here at the Star Coach Show. I cannot believe that we are already halfway through December. 2016 is almost over. This year has gone so quickly for me. That cliche that time goes faster the older you get, I think that that might be true. This year has been a year of growth and challenge and grief and joy in my personal and professional life for my mom and and my family. We are adjusting to life here on earth without my dad. We lost him in April. And going through that transition from having somebody in your life that is so important to you. And I know for my mom, being married to my dad for 64 years, not having been not his partner and his wife for her entire adult life, she's going through a transition of of what life looks like now. And all of us are going through a transition in what life looks like in that sense in a different way. Another transition for me this year has been becoming an empty nester and uh, having both my boys away at college. And I think my husband and I are handling that okay, but it's it's just change and transition. And through that, I continue to teach and to coach my fabulous clients. I'm so happy to say that I was able to get this podcast up and running in 2016 I will continue to set personal and professional goals for time moving forward and and breaking that down and chunking it down into what do I want to see happen in 2017 and will clear a path to make that happen. And I encourage all of you as we draw to a close in 2016, what do you need to do to complete the goals that you have set for this year? And what needs to happen to create clarity and vision for what you want to happen in your professional life, in your personal life for 2017? Our guest today is Allison Hendren. She is the founder and CEO of Coaching Out of the Box. And Allison is an excellent example of having a vision and then setting the course to make that happen. Allison is passionate about what coaching can do and how it can affect every aspect of how we live and work and communicate. Think about the elements of coaching and how we're very intentional about how we send and receive messages, how we use language to empower and effectively communicate. And the root of staying curious and not falling into assumption how we can create additional clarity with one another by asking questions and truly trusting the process of coaching. Allison is a believer in the process of what coaching can bring. And her vision is that everyone learns how to coach and the value of what coaching skills can bring to us individually, to us in relationships, to organizations and cultures. To realize her vision, she created Coaching Out of the Box about eight years ago and has trained thousands of people since that time. And she's going to share more specifics about that in our interview today. So when we think about creating a vision, Allison, who is an executive coach and a coaching educator since 1996, got clear about what her passion, what her vision was, and has made that happen. And she will share in her interview today 
the impact that that has had on other coaching professionals, on organizations, on thousands of people who are now able to interact more effectively, resolve conflict more effectively. The list goes on and on. So let's listen to what Allison has to share about the power of coaching and how she has created a tool to be able to bring coaching into organizations in such a way that it affects entire cultures, entire corporations, and systems. I'm excited to have you learn from one of my coaching instructors, Allison Hendren, as she shares coaching out of the box. So Allison, welcome to the show. I'm so excited that you joined us for Star Coaches. Oh, well, thank you for inviting me, Meg. I'm delighted to be here. Oh, good. For all of you who are listening, Allison was one of my instructors many years ago. We were trying to determine how long ago it was when I went through the University of Texas at Dallas coach certification program. And Allison lives up in Canada, don't you? That's right. Just outside of Vancouver. Excellent. And has been doing marvelous things. And one of the things that you do is coaching out of the box. Tell us a little bit, what is coaching out of the box? When I got into coaching, I became and have been for 20 years now a passionate advocate about it. And what I saw when I would coach other people, and very quickly I became a coaching educator because of the demand for coaches to be developed towards certification, etc., And I saw what happened when people used coaching skills, had these types of conversations, communicated in that way. It just was so powerful and potent. And I saw that with the clients I work with. I saw that with the organizations I work with. And I saw that with the students that I also work with. So as I was moving through that, I realized that I felt everybody needed to learn these skills. Not everybody is going to become a certified coach, but what if everyone had coaching skills? Because those are the kinds of conversations that people are hungering for, in my experience. So I embarked on, it's been quite a journey, of creating a model and programs that would support people learning this as easily as possible. Because I know there's so many coaching programs out there and they're all, you know, so many wonderful things, but they take a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of work, and not everybody has that. And so what I thought was, let's see if we can make it as easy as possible for people to learn this. And I actually delivered that model at UT Dallas when I first came on board because I was one of their very first charter faculty. So interestingly enough, anyway, so I developed it, the name fit because I created a number of items that would be part of some of my programs and they were going to be put in a box. And so even though out of the box has many different connotations, which we fit as well, it was because it went into a box. So I called it, well, what the heck? Why don't we call it coaching out of the box? People like the name. And yes, that's what I did. But what happened is we had enormous success that was wonderful. We've had over 17,000 people take our programs. We are, uh, I presented at Harvard last year, some of the findings that we had with one large organization where we had over 5,000 people through the program. And so it's gone beyond my wildest dreams. And so what has happened now is that we have our programs that we take into organizations. We also license coaches to be able to deliver our flagship program that's so successful. And then it's evolved where I'm also certifying coaches to the ACC level with the ICF because I'm all approved by the ICF as well. So, Oh, really exciting stuff. Can you share a little bit of those 5,000 people that went through this program? What levels were they? Great question. And that's the other thing that's been so exciting about it is that it works at all levels. So we had people in this very, very large organization, which is a healthcare system that employs 150,000 people. 
the people that have gone through it, it started with administrators, directors, leaders, managers. But what happened was it just became so successful that now we've had clinicians through it, child life specialists, people who work with people who have diabetes, and on and on and on. And it it literally has gone right from people that work in the laundry let's say, the laundry facilities, right up to the senior levels in the organization so that they're all using the same model, the same approach, and it's just been enormously successful in that organization. So you're teaching them to coaching techniques. Right, of what happens when you are coach-like in a conversations. What are the key components? What are the five core coaching skills? What are the five steps in a successful coaching exchange? And what are the five guiding principles? What is required of you when you put on your coach hat and have a coaching conversation with someone? And yeah, so that's what, what it is. Yeah. That's really exciting. And what kinds of results are, is that kind of coaching culture bringing to those organizations? So this is what we, uh, myself, and a woman who was internal to the healthcare system that we were working with, what they did, and we didn't know anything about this, is they decided after this program had been implemented over the course of 18 months, they hired an external consulting organization, plus they used a number of their own measuring techniques and skills and tools, and they measured it. They wanted to know, well, how is this doing? What is actually happening as a result of this being brought into the organization? And so there were, what they came up with was seven, well, there was more, but we, we synthesized it down for Harvard and we talked about the seven key qualitative results that were achieved. And they were improved listening, improved communication, improved ability to give feedback, conflict resolution, improvement in team dynamics and team communications, positively impacted relationships. And this one, I love this one, increased ability to engage staff in conversations that are solutions focused and promote accountability. So that came out of that. And so that allowed them or encouraged them to continue to expand it. And so there's lineups for it. People are on waiting lists to take it. It's so successful. So what a wonderful example for you to be able to share with companies about what coaching out of the box can do yes, for their that's culture, right. for their dynamics, for the way that's that they right. interact with one another. And one of the things that they really liked as well was the fact that we supported developing an internal capacity because it can be costly if you're bringing an external organization and their trainers in. And that's fabulous. That is absolutely fabulous. And we do that all the time. And for some organizations, they want to have that capacity developed internally to be cost effective, but also because those people that are developed really understand that organization and can, can kind of delivered in a way that's really effective. And so we license a number of people in the organization and we bring them along to be developed so they have good, what I call coaching chops, and they have a fundamental understanding of it. Not all of them are going to become completely certified, but we take them through a number of programs that get them into high skill development so that they can deliver this themselves within the, within organization. the organization. And then that's part of your program that you actually certify people within the organization. as well. That's right. So tell me a little bit more about the certification program you have for non-internal, for, for other coaches who might want to learn more about coaching out of the box. Right. Well, we have what we call our fast track to ICF certification. And what that is, is that it starts with our 555 coaching skills training program, our coaching fundamentals program, our personal groundwork for coaching program, our advanced coaching skills practicum, and our coach ICF coach knowledge assessment prep class. So they take all six of those programs and they will have completed the required coach specific training hours for ICF certification for the ACC level of coaching. 
And all those programs are delivered using our state-of-the-art virtual classrooms that have webcams, chat rooms, whiteboards, breakout rooms, et cetera, et cetera. Like so live, but they don't necessarily have to be in Canada to do it. Oh, no. We have people, we have a group going through right now where they are from many parts of the United States. They're from Europe. We've got somebody from as far away as Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia, and obviously Canada as well. But no, no, this doesn't, it crosses, as long as a person understands English, they can take it. And the blessing of it as well is, is that if they have to miss the odd class, and we mean just the occasional class, what is beautiful about it is they're all recorded. And it's as if you're in the classroom, because when you watch the recording and you catch up, you want to start interacting because it feels like that. So that the occasional time that that occurs, or they want to review again as they're moving through the program, they can. So All good stuff. So you've got an ACC program. Yeah. And congratulations on that, because I think that's relatively new for you, huh, the last couple of years? Uh, we've had that for a couple of years now. And there's the rigor that you go through with the ICF, the International Coach Federation, and we're happy to do it. It just kind of all, it's evolved. It wasn't in my original plan, but because of the demand and because of the desire that whatever we did – I wanted to make sure people would get those credits, regardless of whether they chose to go all the way to certification. But what I noticed, and Meg, you may have noticed this as well, is some people get started and they'll take a beginning, you know, they'll take a first course and they'll go, I want more. And then what happens is, and what we're seeing more of, is leaders and managers, some of them are saying, you know, I want to add this to my resume. I want to have this because organizations more and more really like to see that on somebody's resume that they have those coaching skills so so yeah. you're having people who are getting a taste of it and then wanting to continue and and you offer that for them right yes. certification if they'd like to be ACC certified yes that's right that's right now what are credential coaches well, for credentialed coaches they can certainly become licensed to deliver our flagship program which is they can leverage the success that they had they we've had with it and also the other thing is they can take our personal groundwork for coaching program which will give them 20 ICF approved credits and this works really well for some who need to add more time on uh, for their coach specific training hours uh, hours requirements some people and also it works really well for people who are recertified remember you know when you get your credential you have to renew it and you have to prove that you have continued to take ongoing education so we can support people in that as well with that particular program and that program was delivered at UT Dallas in the early days as well as it's been delivered in a university in Canada that I headed up for 13 years as their director of training that was just part of what I did and they use it in their uh, graduate certificate program as well. So so in those 20 hours of continuing education, how many yeah. of those are core competency and how many are referral development? All of them are core competency. All of them are core competency. In fact, all of the courses that we deliver are all core competency. That's phenomenal. So yeah. um, of the 40 that somebody needs over the three years, you could conceivably yeah. offer 20 of those core competencies. That's right. That's right. And we have some people doing just that right now, going through our personal groundwork for coaching program. They're literally doing that because they're renewing. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about when coaches become certified in your Yes. How do they use it? What does coaching out of the box do for their practice? Okay. So this is what we're seeing. There are a number of... I would say it's kind of 50-50. 50% are wanting to do this as their own business, meaning they want to be a coach. Some of them have had fabulously successful careers. They now want to leave the corporate environment and they want to create their own coaching practice, their own coaching business. So we've got, I would say about 50% of them are that. And the other 50% are internal. 
In other words, they're either being sent by the organization who recognizes this is of value. I mean, in fact, we were just talking to an organization in New Mexico who's sending some people through our programs because they recognize that value. So there's about 50% of them that are using this and adding it to the work that they do as leaders and managers, HR professionals, etc. The salespeople, call center people, people that are working in the energy and gas sector. It crosses all verticals, as I like to say. So something just occurred to me as, let's say someone is certified. Yes. They, you're saying coaching out of the box. So I'm assuming there's materials. Would they need then to get materials through you to supply to their people or is it? That's a great question. If they become licensed to deliver our flagship 555 coaching skills training program, as part of being licensed, yes, they will purchase the box of materials that they will give to every person who takes the program from them. Yes, you're right. Or that's, remember, we have basically six programs. And so that one, yes. The other programs, they're not, it's not a licensing approach. They get materials and they use them to learn the materials. And, and with personal groundwork, if they want to do it with their clients, and that's what some people do, they use it for their client, with their clients. They'll just purchase the workbook and use it if they wish. They don't have to, but it's a choice. And many, many, many are doing that. They're buying uh, a number of them and they're using it with all their clients because, of course, as you know and we know, yes, it's, you know, they're in business, they're in organizations, but it's also about the person and what are the things that they need to strengthen in their life or look at in their life to really help them as they navigate themselves through their lives and their careers. That's really fun stuff that you've kind of put together to make. One of the things that I hear from new coaches, many well, just not even new coaches, maybe just coaches in general, is how do I bring value to a company? How do I approach a company and say, I know that learning coaching skills would be helpful or it can help development of leadership, those kinds of things, but how do I do it? Yes, and this is one way. And so here's how I see what I've seen happen quite frequently. All right, there's a few different ways. One, a coach has a client that they're working in an organization. They've engaged with a client, a leader, a manager, director, whatever. And that person starts to say to them, wow, I really like the way you're interacting with me. I want to learn more how to do that. And then that evolves into them potentially or possibly delivering a program to a group of senior leaders or mid-level. It depends. You know, they come in at different levels. So that's one way. Sorry, now, I lost my train of thought there for a second. You said for beginning coaches. Or, or just coaches in general who are saying, how do I sort of break into companies? Yeah. Or what kind of value can I bring? Okay. To so here's the other piece is that. When you decide that this is what you want to do and you recognize you want to bring that to an organization, you've got to step into, you know what I'm becoming is I'm becoming a coaching educator. And you need to kind of have those conversations with the organization about what would this do? What are the missing pieces or what are the holes that this is going to fill? Or what are the challenges that you're having in the organization is having that perhaps coaching is going to be able to fill? And you're going to need to have those kinds of conversations. And one of the things that I highly recommend is that you try to get an opportunity where you do a short introduction about coaching. And you literally, and this is what will strengthen anybody who's out there who's developing as a coach. And one of the most powerful ways, aside from coaching someone, is having to do real live coaching demos. Not pretend not role play, not, oh, we've rehearsed this whole thing, but literally just right in the moment, having somebody sit on a stool with you and demonstrating it right then and there in front of a group of people. That has been my most powerful way when I've gone into organizations and talked to them is literally taking that risk. As frightened as I have been, I remember one time I was in one organization and I literally, I didn't even know I was going to do it. I'm with this, the CEO and all his team. And I literally said to him, well, how about we get some coaching here? Are you, are you open for it? And he looked at me and he sort of went, okay. And I literally started to coach him in front of his team. 
that was so cool because he was modeling willingness to take risk, willingness to be vulnerable in front of his team. I was modeling that they, they knew we hadn't, you know, practiced it or anything, and they were seeing how it could work. But, you know, it's going to it's going to put you on the edge. You're going to be on the hot seat. That, that takes courage on your part to, in front of the team, say, let's right. do it. Let's do some coaching. But as I've developed as a coaching educator, Meg, and I'm sure you've experienced this as well, it's just been the best thing for me because it, it strengthened my bil- ability to coach because I was willing to take those risks and kind of <laughs> put myself out there. Jump into the deep end and swim. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And did you get that coaching engagement? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, and that was an organization in Illinois. So there you go. Yeah. Good stuff. What other words of wisdom might you have just in general for, I mean, you've been doing this a long time. So what do you find to be some of the attributes, some of the characteristics of coaches who tend to be maybe more successful? Okay, great question. All right. So first of all, first of all, you've got to be willing to take risks and recognize that especially people will hire you as their coach because you have something they want. And there's something about you that demonstrates that. And you've really got to know that when you're working with someone, there obviously has to be a gap between where they are and where they want to be. you got to have that. But you've got to be prepared to challenge and move them forward. If they're not moving forward, if you're being just nice and, oh, isn't that great? And never kind of asking them some pretty pointed questions at times and really challenging them. People love to be challenged. And the other thing that I think really can help you, in my opinion, help support success is look for opportunities to encourage and acknowledge that person because people are starving for it. In my experience in organizations, they're all running around. They're so busy. There's so many things going on. They are not being encouraged enough. They're not being acknowledged enough. And I mean it in a sincere way and in a way that lands with the individual. I think those things are really critical. But you yourself, as the coach, also need to be committed to strengthening and developing yourself constantly. And this is what I like about coaching is it keeps me honest. (laughs) It does. Because I'm constantly having to go, oh, yeah, I better get my act together about that. And so I think being committed to doing that as well, but always thinking about have I challenged how the people need to be able to move farther, faster, easier, quicker, better than they would have If they hadn't had a coach, you know, you've got to provide value. If they are already exactly where they need to be, they're probably not wanting to work with a coach. So you've got to look at where do they want to get and how do I create that discomfort enough to help them move in that direction? That's right. That's right. Excellent. Well, I so appreciate that you've taken time to visit us with today and share about coaching out of the box. Such a neat idea. And if people want to know more about Coaching Out of the Box, how would they get that information? Well, they can go to our website, coachingoutofthebox.com. They can literally contact me, Allison, with one L, -L A-L-I-S-O-N, at coachingoutofthebox.com. And they can join one of our monthly free webinars that we put on all kinds of topics related to coaching. They can sign up for our newsletter on our website and we'll keep in touch with them with what we're up to and what we're, we're doing. So I think I've well, covered all the ways. Lots and, <laughs> and I'm happy to put that information on my resource page as well. So oh, people can have great. it that way. Meg, and I would just like to say to you, because I want to acknowledge you for what you're doing. You know, it's clear that you want to educate people about coaching, the coaching field of coaching, what's going on in coaching. And in my experience, People get confused at times about what coaching is. There's just so many components of that. So way to go. And it's so nice to be reconnected with you again after all these years. And just congratulations, because I know you're a very, very successful coach and uh, have worked really hard at that. So just congratulations to you. 
Thank you. Thank you, Allison. I really appreciate that. So thank you once again to Allison Hendren for being a guest on the show, sharing your passion about what coaching can do for the community at large. And it was just a ton of fun to catch up with Allison and to spend time with her today. If you'd like to know more about Coaching Out of the Box or Allison Hendren or about the Star Coach Show, be sure to visit starcoachshow.com. On our site, you will find resources and links to resources that have been discussed on the show, some free downloads, and an option to give feedback through a survey that's on site if you'd like to fine-tune the show to better meet your needs. And also, don't forget, we have the ongoing book giveaway that you can access through the contact page by entering your name, your email, and giveaway in the comment section. As we think about goals for 2017, I do want to let you know that a membership site will be open for Star Coaches. It's going to offer even more phenomenal resources for you, and you'll be getting more information about that as we move forward. So until next week, I wish you the very best for your coaching success. This is your host, Meg Rentschler. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.